This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Five out of the door! With your host, Mark Martinez. Because I'm the Mark and I'm awesome! The Guru. Today I'm going to break it down for all you simpleton sweat hogs listening out there in Can Crusher Nation. I don't mean to come out here week after week and toot my own horn, but toot, toot. And the English Professor. It is I, the English Professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to Can Crushers. It is a crazy week here in the studio. What's going on? Joining me in studio is the glorious one, Chad Piranha. Chad, how are you? Doing great. This has been a hell of a week as a wrestling fan. And in his humble abode, uh, originally from Brooklyn, New York, via Ridgeway, Pennsylvania, he's driven through North Carolina one time, drinking some coffee, now residing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with some dope-ass hair and a Superman shirt on this week. It is the English Professor. Wow, what an intro. That was awesome. If I ever was a wrestler or something, that I would want that to be my intro. That was fantastic. Yeah, it's because you drove through North Carolina one time. I did I drive or did you drive? I did, but you were at least you, you yeah. were driven through. That you're not getting a whole point yeah. of the fucking interview. Yeah. We'll get to Which, it. Yeah. My God. Um Yeah, so what what a week. For you guys, and I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, I promise. But, no, I'm not saying anything. All I'm saying is, like, this is an old-school type of uh, recording where you record bam, 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 and then release it on different days. You guys are, are working hard. That's all I'll say. You and Chad are working hard on this show and putting together some good stuff that everybody's going to hear soon enough. Soon. Now, this Can Crushers this week is kind of like, you know, the... Uh, Degeneration X is, you know, you had two guys that did all the work, and then you have John slash X Pac taking the money and credit. It's un- I thought you were going to call me China. <laughs> it's unbelievable that this goes unscripted every week, and people still listen, and we're being contacted to, for more listeners. Um, yeah, I don't get it. I, anyway, yeah. thank you guys. I don't- that was, a, like us. that was a great shoot, by the way. Like, we we were just literally 15 minutes ago, we were docile, we were pumped, we were like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and you guys will find out in a couple weeks, and I'm like, oh my god, and now we're just shitting on each other. Yeah. Good. Good. So, as Can Crushers, we had a great week. What'd you do this week, Chad? Not a damn thing other than Can Crusher yeah, stuff. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> I <don't> mean, <laughs> Fine. Fuck you, too. John, I watched Iron Sheik promos. I know I've said this before, but uh, they're entertaining. They're a lot of fun. Um, I watched Roddy Piper's first WWF match. It was a tag team match almost 37 years ago to the day, February 11th, 1984. On a Saturday morning, he teamed up with Dr. D, David Schultz, against Frank Williams and some guy, Callahan, something Callahan. And Frank Williams never even tagged into the match. But Piper actually did some wrestling moves. He did like a gut wrench suplex. He was fresh off his feud with Greg Valentine. I mean, Starcade was two months earlier, three months earlier, whatever it was. So he still had some NWA in him that the WWF hadn't quite ironed out. How dare he wrestle? God. Yeah, yeah, he did moves. There, There was no room for that in 80s WWF. I, since you guys aren't going to ask, I had a couple Zoom meetings to take care of, which will benefit everybody down the line. Nothing's coming out of the bag yet, as both of you have no clue, but that's what you get to know, Zoom meetings. Um, we bought Peacock this week. We bought Peacock. We, we said, yeah, I know I'm going to need it by WrestleMania or Fastlane or whatever, so I thought, uh, why not get it now 
where if they need to iron any bugs out, get it, and if I get to do an update, I can do an update. Um, prior to falling asleep last night, or the other night, or however we're recording this, prior to falling asleep the night before I recorded the podcast, um, I don't know, we were all kind of, yeah, it's Valentine's weekend, but we were all into kind of uh, horror mystery, so we watched Body in the Backyard. Uh, buried in the backyard or something like that about people killed and they buried them in the backyard we're messed up sometimes like we should documentary or well it's a series a season i mean there's two seasons about you know each show is different about how people were killed and tossed in their backyard i oh my god yeah happy valentine's day though yeah yeah, you too (laughs) yeah you're a sick bastard here i mean i'm watching a canadian series that's been going for 14 years, Heartland, uh, about cowboys, horses, and stuff like that. And it's Canadian. Actually, it's a Canadian series. It's on Netflix. I've seen it. But excellent, excellent show. Uh, about everything you could think of covered in there, you know, family dramas, everything like that. Good family show, actually. Mine is not. Not, not no, so much. No, we yeah. all we are also the ones that our Christmas go to movie every year as a family because Kelly and Ethan watch that god awful Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase every oh, like thirty times a year. She's pissed at me now. Happy Valentine's Day to Mark. Um, we watch Krampus every Christmas about the monster that comes and takes your Christmas away. I don't know what's wrong with us. Damn the the <laughs> list the. <laughs> The list of what is not wrong with you is probably shorter. Yeah. Um, Agreed. <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk about some wrestling then. Do we, let's just, you want to just go in order this week because it's, it's just going to be easier. We'll, sure. We'll take wrestling off the board here in the first segment, and then uh, we'll do the fantasy booking in a second. I have this week's Love Them While You Got Them, as John likes to say, and we'll make our predictions for tonight's NXT. Take over Vengeance yep. or whatever. It's going to be a good card. And then next week is the unbelievable, exciting Elimination Chamber matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. going to be a good card. Not going to be a good card. Spoiler, Kevin Owens wins and gets the 177th fucking match against the brains. Wow, that's way too early of a spoiler. <laughs> Raw! You're drinking coffee, I'm drinking beer, and Chad's got Gatorade. Uh, I'm prepping for a dinner with uh, family members. We'll just leave it at that. Will your dad be able to get out of his I driveway? It. I doubt it. I, I doubt it. It's, okay. it's snowing now, so hopefully somebody helps him. <laughs> Shane O'Mac's back for 30 ungrateful <sighs> seconds. I can't stand that guy. I just can't. I I was thinking about him and how Rocky Johnson mentioned him in his uh, Hall of Fame speech. You know, he was that kid that was always hanging around. He was a big Rocky Johnson fan. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt he loves that business. For crying out loud, if our fathers owned a wrestling promotion, we would be those annoying kids. It doesn't mean they belong in the business. And it's not just – I know I crap on Stephanie. I, I I do. But Shane doesn't belong anywhere. He's even worse. He's even worse. I don't know what he brings to the table. At this point, it's just ego. It's ego. Hey, I want to be on TV today. Write me in. He can dance. I guess. Yeah. Nothing. Um – uh, Edge decided he's not going to pick until after the Elimination Chamber. Of course. And, oh, yeah. That, duh. Neither one are. Yeah. And other than Randy and Drew, Drew wins by Sheamus coming in and kicking him in the face. What did you get from Raw, John? I enjoyed AJ Styles against Jeff Hardy. I'm big on AJ Styles. I don't know that I say this every week, but every couple of weeks. Ric Flair has talked about on, on his podcast about picking apart people's stuff. And we hate to do that here. We really do. I don't know how many times I've said that, but we don't want to pick apart anything. But if you had to, 
I don't think you could pick apart anything AJ Styles does in terms of body, look, character, promo. Lots of people that are above him on that list. In terms of in-ring work, I don't know that anybody is better now or ever has been. If if he like ricochets off the ropes, you know, where, where he does a, a spring off the ropes. He doesn't jump too high. And my point is, if you jump too high, you give your opponent an opportunity to react and defend. Even his leaps off the ropes are shorter, crisper, more direct. The guy's brilliant. My only problem is he's got that huge bodyguard with him. How is this guy, the two of them, not in a bigger, how are they not in a bigger storyline? What is AJ Styles doing right now is my question. He's wrestling just because matches, which is fine. And I don't know that a United States title run is appropriate because Bobby Lash is doing good things and that feud wouldn't work. And I know the intercontinental titles on SmackDown, but whatever, like it matters. How is he not in an intercontinental title picture? I think he and Big E would put on good matches. How is he not in some title picture as brilliant as he is in the ring? He can generate some heat. I don't get how he's not in a major storyline. His talents are wasted on that brand. I've said from day one about AJ watching him back to TNA, Ring of Honor, uh, against Samoa Joe, CM Punk, Tyler Black, a.k.a. Seth Rollins. There's nobody, in my opinion, that has been an overall better wrestler in the business than him. I don't think you're going to have too many people saying no. Uh, there's just there's just not. And he's in he's in a supporting role right now. I I you know see what John's saying, why isn't he in a title thing? Um title run. He's he's in a supporting role. I don't think he's done with the titles. I think he's going to have one more world title run in him. I'd be all right with that. Chad, I know that you're an asshole, but how does yours feel? <laughs> My hole! Enough on that. Uh, you didn't, John, you, you didn't know about this, did you? I mean, other than... an asshole? No, no, yeah, not, no but not that I'm an asshole or about my asshole or about Nia Jax's hole, for that matter. Mark did not know the whole story about the hole. An X Pac. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, does this have to do with China? No, not that. <laughs> it's not on that film. No, then no, I don't either. The 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 thing behind Nia Jax's "My Hole, My Hole" was a reference back a few years to when Sean Waltman, X Pac, at an independent show went to do his Bronco Buster and ripped his asshole <laughs> and damn near bled to death. He oh. ripped it he ripped it so bad they had to stop the match. His pants were filling and he goes to go to a bar and it got so bad they had to take him out via ambulance, and they said that it looked like a fucking slaughterhouse. He literally ripped his asshole that bad. That's where nobody's fucking getting that. So you're telling me he had anal leakage? Oh, my God. Severely. I, I think of... Uh... When Frito Lay started using, I was just gonna say, what was that stuff in chips in the '90s that they had to get rid of? Celestra. That's it. That's it. it. Yeah, they had it right on the bag that it could cause anal leakage, and <laughs> clearly Sean Waltman must have uh, oh, loosened God. his bowels a little bit. <laughs> well, we loosened the. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's Speaking of <laughs> anal leakage, what, anything else from Raw? I don't know if we could top that. So <laughs> let's transition over to AEW because um, 
We're going in order. God, I'm sorry, AEW, for following that. Uh, Hell of a transition. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get shit on. God, this is going to be a bad show. Here we go. Um, I loved the Darby Allen and Joey Janela match. I think this is probably Joey Janela's best match in his life. And he was carried by somebody younger, uh, thinner, better than him. But... Janela looked good in this match. Yeah, this was only... When I seen this announced, I was like, fucking really? Joey Nutella's getting a fucking match and everything. What are they going to do? I'm still not on his bandwagon, but this was a good match. This yeah. was a good match. Yeah, this was very good. Um, I think Darby Allen needed to defend his title. Um, just to kind of legitimize his title reign and remind us that he's TNT champion. This is Joey Janela's best match that I've seen in a while. Again, the coffin drop. I'm glad to see somebody's finisher finish a match. Great chain wrestling, mat wrestling to start. Great way to kick off the show. Then we have a Max promo that kind of turns into Sammy and Max backstage. Let me just say, finally... And we're not even to the end of the show yet. But finally, I thought, if that was all they're going to do, finally, something happened on AEW between those two where there was fisticuffs, if you would say. Agreed. Yeah, it was about time they took this to another level. Yeah, needed to move on. It was it was almost at a, I don't give a fuck point. It wasn't far from that. Yeah. This next match, I can Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes can beat Andre the Giant in two seconds. Uh, Ellie Gante in two seconds. He he wrestles Omega, Moxley, all those guys, and puts on great matches. And I'm not disrespecting anybody else in this match, but they just don't have the name. Uh, Cesar, Peter Avalon, Sylvan is bigger than him. Um, Johnson, uh, you know the best thing Big about this Dick match? Big Dick Johnson? Not Big Dick Johnson, no, God. Uh, no, the best thing I liked about this match was seeing Arn Anderson's, air quotes, son. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Uh, Is that his son? I, I, yeah. 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 He really does look like him and Gene Anderson. And they're, yeah. only and and they're not even related. Yeah. No. Not um, even related. The fans made this sound like this was match of the year already. Whoa! And Cody wasn't even involved in this. But for 30 seconds. Where the fuck did he hurt himself? I don't know. Now that he's injured. I don't know. I hated this. I absolutely hated this. And I already see that, all right, clearly he's going to be Big Dick Johnson on our show. He's turning on them within a month. Yeah. Just because he, it, there was something he doesn't know how maybe to do an interview. It, it just leaked too much mentally to me that he is turning on them. I watched this match and I just thought to myself, "What's Cody doing lately?" I j he's kind of all over the place, but nowhere at the same time. Um, yeah, and I didn't love the match. I thought there was, I hate to say this, I thought there was too much no selling. I even thought that about the Darby Allen match just a touch. But this has become a problem on AEW in general, and we'll see it again in some of the other matches, at least one other match. But, like, something happens, and the thought process is, I have another spot to get to. Well, you know, finish this one, work on this one, give us everything you can out of this one, and then get where you're going. But that was bothersome to me. How ironic that somebody that we just got off the phone with doing an interview said that one of the biggest problems with wrestling today... Are you saying a legend said that? A legend hmm. said this, that the one of the biggest problems with wrestling today is the fact that nobody wants to appear weaker because they feel it's going to hurt their position, or as he put it, their fucking push. I I like the way he said, <laughs> this guy could sell one kick in the head compared to 47 kicks in the head as 
One kick in the head could kill you. 47 in the head. You're fucking dead. You're dead. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Bucks and the Good Brothers are just pissing matching it all over the place until the Bucks say they're going to fight Pride and Powerful next week. That, that's it. Hangman and uh, Hardy, I want to celebrate tonight. He says, yeah, I'm going. He's got to get his phone. He already had his phone. Then he runs into the Dark Order. Then he actually ends up going out with Hardy. Uh, we'll skip ahead to when they actually are drinking. Hardy's going to screw him over. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of see that coming, too. Chad nods. He doesn't care. The, yeah, this it's getting fucking old. Uh, the bastard Puck against Dolph Ziggler's brother. I can't even think of his name. Ryan Nemeth? Nemeth? Sure. Yeah. You got anything to say about that? Because I'm done. Um, I like Pac. I like what we're seeing out of him. Um, I like his hard-hitting, snapping moves. His DDT, his suplexes, they're, you know, they're sharp. They look like a guy that, they come from a guy that hits really hard. It, it gives you a sense of who this guy is. We we never got this from him, you know, his WWE. WWE days, I don't think. No. No, he was he was, he was a aerial. passive passive yeah. aggressive baby face. Yeah. Uh the wedding recap, anybody care? Elizabeth and Savage? That was a great wedding. John John laughed so hard. It was fun the first time around. I didn't need to see it again. <laughs> we watched the <laughs> What WrestleMania was it that we went to my uncle's and when oh he, the reunion yeah yeah WrestleMania eight yeah yeah uh, no no seven seven the retirement match yeah John busted out laughing at people la- uh, crying in the stands yeah. just he yeah. laughed from Bradford to Ridgeway <laughs> you guys it, it's an hour he just wouldn't stop laughing at these marks which we are yeah. too just some were crying that they got yeah. What was yeah. bad about that is they were actually divorced and separated. Or close or divorced. to divorced. Yeah, they were yeah. separated. At in, the time yeah. they're doing the fucking angle, like they're getting married. They were already yeah. divorced at the time. And it's like, that's, no, it's that's about the bullshit. Money. Ah, yeah. fuck. Vincent. That had to be yeah. tough. The Inner Circle are kind of together, and we get a match then between the Inner Circle and the Acclaimed. God, I hate the Acclaimed. The Acclaimed's maybe a step above the box, guys, for me. Um, I know we don't pull things, but this one was so obvious. Aubrey lost herself in this match. She lost herself because Jericho was down for a good five seconds, and I know you guys are like, five seconds is nothing. Um, Wardlow told Aubrey... Turn around and pin. Go back and watch this. <laughs> really? So Jericho could kick out of getting hit by the speaker. So she, like, spun herself. She's like, oh, shit, that's my spot. I mean, no no disrespect, but... It happens. It, it yeah. happened. And, but I, to me, it was blatantly obvious. I'm like, Wardlow's like... And it was Jericho that was getting pinned. So it had to happen before the next spot could happen. I didn't like this match. I, I enjoyed it because of MJF and Jericho doing some old school heel stuff like the I don't know, the leverage, like the pulling of the hands and reaching in over the ropes to like put extra leverage on a hold. MJF's taped ribs or whatever from getting punched once, selling that for the duration of the show because Guevara punched him. He's great. He's so good. He is such a throwback to he he's a Roddy Piper Don Morocco type of heel for me. MJF is. He keeps the K he keeps K Fabe going. Yep. You know, he's a dick. He he doesn't care if you're an eight year old kid whose father just died. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay. Sting comes out, but Taz, before Sting could say a word, Taz and Hobbs cut him off. Uh, if either one of you are getting drugged in a body bag behind a vehicle, I'm going to lo- move a little bit faster than Sting did. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh shit, they're taking Chad in a body bag. I'm going to run. Not, he power walked, if that. Yeah. Yeah. This, th- if they want to know how to do some shit like this right, go back to when the James brothers 
and Baby Doll fucking had Cornette around the neck with a fucking bull rope and was dragging him with a car. That's how the shit looked real. Now, the review of that is that it was fucking real and Baby Doll took off too quickly <laughs> driving the car. That's crazy. But, come on. This is as bad as that fucking midget dummy that Randy Orton burnt in the fucking ring. Clipboard. Wow, you're professional even. You have a clipboard over there. Yeah, I found um, it was my clipboard from when I coached uh, the little kids in baseball. Like, you know, I'm going to use this today. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Omega played golf. Uh, my match of the week, though. You used to have a... Never mind. My match of the week was Leia Hirsch uh, against Thunder Rosa in the, the tournament qualifier. I love this. I love Layla Hirsch. You guys know how much I love Thunder Rosa. This was great. Everything about it. It just told a story about Layla is just trying to get there. And she's got the power over Rosa, but she doesn't have the smarts. Two things about this match. Everything you said, Mark. Agreed. Best match. There's a suicide dive in every single match. And I don't know why I was tired of it by this point, because I think even in Darby Allen versus Joey Janela, they each did one, for yes. crying out loud. Now in this one, we get it again. I'm just like, all right already. So that's one. The other thing is, in a couple of matches we talked about no selling, there was a point where Layla Hirsch did a moonsault off the top rope. Rosa put her knees up. She landed on her knees. Hirsch went down. Oh, got right back up and went to... Take a second. You, you landed on somebody's knees. How are you breathing? Not a wince, not a grimace. Right back on your feet to do the next move. You know, I, I'm okay even if, like, you, you want to get back up and do the next move. Roll away. Use the ropes to pick yourself up. Show me the determination. Like, you're holding your ribs. You're still hurt. But to just, boom, land on somebody's ribs... Ross and company are like, oh, she put the knees up. Great defense. That's got to knock the wind out of you. I guess not. She's right back up again. <laughs> if I owned this or was a writer or whatever the case is, and these fucking people did this, you get one warning. The second time, you get a fucking shot collar oh, put on. I thought maybe detention. Now, second time you get a shot collar put on, third time you do it, I am going to zap you until that fucking battery dies or somebody cuts Jesus. it off of you. But I or you can be fired. I thought you had a good week. I did, but this this is a, this is a, the problem. Nobody wants to fucking sell. Yeah. And, it's and not going to make you look. It, you say, oh, it's going to make me look bad if, if I sell or if I look weak. Well, it's going to make you look like a fucking jackass when, oh, I'll take fucking, you know, knees to the ribs after I jump 10 feet in the fucking air. Come on. To, to your guys' point, though, and the gentleman with whom you just spoke, is it a fear of no selling? And I guess he would know. Or are they just not trained properly? And then I guess my other question is, Chad would shock their callers. But where, where, where is ownership? Where is a booker who says, hey, guys, let's work on this, this, and this? Two, where is that? Two things. A, the guys that we talked to straight out said, back in the 80s and stuff like that, there wasn't this. Everybody worked with everybody because you got paid by the number of asses you put in the seats. You didn't have these huge contracts. You didn't have this guaranteed shit. Now, it's more of a, believe it or not, it's more of a cutthroat business now, and people don't want to appear weak because, oh, if I appear weak, then... I don't get my contract. I don't, I don't, I, I my don't get contract. I don't get my push. As good old JR says, you fucking push. But we know it's a work, so who cares? I don't know if Layla Hirsch can beat up Thunder Rosa or not. Who cares? I, I, I want to be entertained. Sell me that you just got your ribs cracked. Anyway. Charlotte Flair, in a couple couple of weeks ago, we said about this, and I'll bring, I'll bring this one up. 
Well, I give her a lot of shit. Mark and I do. We're the smart ones. John likes her. <laughs> That's the best but, thing you've ever said on Can Crushers. But she, I'm the smart one. When she took, when they lost the tag titles, she took that fucking women's right from Lacey Evans like Mike fucking Tyson hit her. Yep. Yep. But sell it. But on the same thing, when she rolled into. By that point, it would have been black and blue. Do you have a makeup fucking department? But that's not on her. That's not on her. On For not having someone put makeup on her. Someone's got to make that decision. Hey, gunk, gunk up her eye before she goes out she, there. She should. I think she shares some blame in that. And it's, it's right along the lines of... I mean, she must have gone to Randy Orton's doctor because that motherfucker gets <laughs> three quarters of his... Of his face fucking burned off, and the next week, he looks like he's going to be on GQ magazine next to the fucking rock. <coughs> Sorry, Mark. I, I'm drinking already. Jungle <laughs> Boy talking about Dax, I really like this. I really hope yeah. they separate Jungle Boy from Jurassic Express. That's my goal. I really do. Um, I, I, I missed this comment last week, and I'm going to hit this. Luchasaurus. When they cut his fucking horns off, and I said it was like when cattle have to have their horns cut because they're testosterone, and they got a—they're basically neutering them. You are really then, into this documentary that you're watching. And then the motherfucker comes out with this mask on that makes him look like the 1940s version of the Swamp Thing off a of fucking Scooby Doo, even. Come on! Get a new fucking mask! I would have got away with it, too, if it wasn't for your sniveling kids. Meddling. Meddling. Whatever. Meddling. What's wrong with sniveling? It's, it's probably not even a word. No, sniveling's a word, but sniveling means, like, they're big babies, or, you know, whiny. Meddling means they Young stuck bucks. their nose in their business. Young Bucks versus Kenny Omega. Kent, uh, Kenta and <laughs> Kenny Omega take on Mox and Archer, and... If anything goes, and they were cooking fajitas and beating each other with potato. I didn't care. Yeah. AEW disappointed me this week besides Thunder and Layla, and we just ripped that apart, too. So It, it was okay. I, I get the, the joke. Obviously, we marks like us picked up on it. They were hitting them with potatoes. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I know it was a brawl and anything goes, but this, this got a little bananas for me. Oh, good Good thing you used the food, too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Chad's nodding his head. We can go to NXT, apparently. Uh, NXT uh, this weekend is Vengeance. And again, you guys know in segment three, we'll take care of our... Uh, vengeance? Ver- yeah, NXT... Takeover. Takeover Vengeance Day. Yeah, takeover yeah. is better. Oh, oh, one of the dogs has made it out of the hole. Uh, MSK against uh, Legata del Fantasma. John, what did you think? Uh, this was kind of a shocker for me. Same here. Um, what I loved about this was what I didn't love about AEW, and that was that there was perfect selling and timing, at least in this match, and we'll take a look at everything else, but at least in this match, um, you know, Wild is in an arm bar. Before he, he does his counter out of it, he winces for one second, like, oh, shit, I got my arm twisted. And then he works out of it. Um, this is not the same guy we saw in IWC who was awesome then. He is polished now. He really is. His attitude, his charisma, uh, leaps and bounds above what he was when we saw him in Pittsburgh. This is a great tag team match. Really was. Good mat wrestling. Little bit of Lucha style, but not too over the top. Um, my only criticism in an otherwise perfect match is Joaquin Wilde came in um, and then Mendoza tagged him once he was already in the ring. You have to be on the apron before your partner tags you. That's all. Uh, cross laid everybody out then afterwards? Yes. Um, well, yeah, because they lost the tag team, which was surprising to me. MSK gets the win here, advances in the tournament. Um, and then Legato wants to apologize 
uh, to their leader. And he's like, no, no, just I have a job for you to do and sends them after carrying cross and, uh, cross is like, you should have, uh, not sent them to do your dirty work. You should have come to do it yourself. Um, because what I just did to them is what I'm going to do to you. And then the camera pans back and they're face down on the ground. Zia Lee takes on Cora J and, uh, um, what I got out of this was the start of Zia Lee's music sounds just like when the Yankees hit a home run. A Yankee Sam, he goes, dun, 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 dun. I'm like, oh, yeah, pitchers and catchers are going to report soon. This is great. So that's what I got out of that. Yeah. Uh, some teams at the end of the week, some teams beginning of next week. So thank God. Yeah. Uh, we'll, and they're saying their fans are going to go to baseball this year. So I'm pretty yeah. excited about that. Yeah, me too. Not a great match, though. No, I, I still need something more out of Zia Lee. I really do. Shotzi and Ember take on the way. Yes. Um, so the first of the way had a great promo in the ring um, with Johnny Gargano nursing a broken arm, and it was the wrong <laughs> arm, and he can't walk because of his broken arm, and Austin Theory's got to carry him into the ring. Put him funny, in. funny stuff. Put him into a wheelchair. Put them in the wheelchair. Those guys are great. They really are. All four of them. Um, this was good, fast-paced action, which was appropriate because that promo with the way ended on a high note. Because Kushida comes in, tries to pull the belt away. Gargano pulls it back, and you realize his arm's not hurt, and Kushida cleans house. So when you go into the tag team match, you have to start that match hot. You don't want to start it with, like, lock-up, scientific wrestling. Boom. They go right for a brawl. Uh, and then it slows down when the heels kind of take over. Um, and I like to mention when, when Candice LeRae and Shachi Blackheart were in the ring together, this is what I love about pro wrestling. Let's not forget their past feud. You know, these two ladies haven't forgotten each other from Halloween Havoc or whatever the hell it was. Um, great stuff. And again, in my opinion, um, I thought this was an upset. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. I, I would have thought the way it was going to get pushed yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. But I, I like how they pancaked the matches together because then we get the next match is Austin Theory against Kushida, like, right off the bat. Great. Yeah. Keeping the way hot. Yep, yep. Uh, and it wasn't a good night for the way. Kushida had some moments. Again, great storytelling in this match. He had some moments where he was torturing Austin Theory, where he had him in a surfboard. You know, he had his both arms barred behind him, and he had his foot in the middle of his back, but with Theory face down, and then he's just, like, stomping his face into the mat. And then he did it sort of another version of a surfboard where he had both arms barred with just one foot. Um, so he, he really he stretched him, he twisted him, made Austin Theory pay the price. But when Theory took over, any move he did, I mean, it looked good, but he was so super proud of himself. That's great storytelling. That tells me that that's somebody that maybe deep down knows he doesn't belong in a ring with Kushida. But that level of pride is him saying, see, look, I do belong in a ring with this guy. Good, good stuff. Really good stuff. And again, it ends with Austin Theory getting his ass kicked and Kushida's close to the ropes. And Gargano throws like a super kick or a roundhouse kick or something and catches him right in the face and knocks him out. Causing a DQ. Your homeboy ends up in a Lamborghini. <laughs> Cameron Grimes made a couple of investments. Uh, How does he, he know about investments? I, I don't know. It just takes one or two good ones, I guess. But it all it, it was a chain reaction. So he discovered video games. Maybe he played John Rocker... Uh, or he was John Rocker on, on Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball or something. Maybe that's what I thought when he said that I discovered video games. I'm like, oh, I wonder if he discovered his character on one of the Super Nintendo games. He probably he probably bought a no droid and was pissed off at Retro Gaming House like me and yeah. sent his stuff to Gabriel Molina to take care of it. And now he just loves everything that he's got, too. Yeah, probably. Uh, but his love of video games led him to 
GameStop, which I guess then he bought stock in it, hit it big, bought stock in something else. I don't remember what, but anyway, he's throwing money on the mat and rolling around in it. Good for Cameron Grimes. Took a lot of shit from a lot of people. This was hated, though. As much as we laugh about it and loved it, this was hated by, like, Bleacher Report and other ah. play. They, they hated, they were like, this was stupid. This was stupid. Uh. Leading to the final match of the night, the Grizzly Young Veterans against Champa and Thatcher. And let me say, I told you, and I'm going to say I told you after Sunday as well. I, uh, I, again, I was shocked how this match ended, but Grizzled Young Veterans, for the second time in a row, are in the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Uh, one thing I want to point out about this match, there was a doomsday device during the course of the match, and we, we talk about kicking out of old school finishers. I'm okay with this, because the pin was broken up, and so we're led to believe, like, had it not been broken up, uh... Then maybe, you know, they'd have gotten a three count. Right. There's a right way to, to, to show respect to some of the old school finishes. And I think this was the right way. Again, I'm surprised. I, I was surprised by just about all these finishes in the tag team tournaments. Um, I thought Champ and Thatcher would go to the finals. Uh, and then who, who, who? So the Grizzled Young Veterans are taking on who now? Cole and... No, MSK. Uh, MSK, that's right, oh. MSK, yeah. Because they, yeah. Neither one of you are right. Uh, MSK, I, Legato. I at least got... I didn't see them going. I thought them getting a push, yes. But I said, from the start of this, I said, this was uh, the Grizzle Young Veterans return. It, they were winning it. And you had the era, and I don't remember who the hell you had. I don't know. But, Fandango, probably. Yeah. Is this the right choice? So I know you have two very good teams in the final, the Grizzled, Grizzled Young Veterans and MSK, but what would theoretically sell tickets? Look, they're not interested in selling tickets anymore in this world in which we currently live, but wouldn't Ciampa and Thatcher in the finals against the God of the Phantasma be like an absolute barn burner or, I don't know, the um, Cole and uh, Roddy? Yeah, wouldn't that be a team you'd want to see in the finals? These are not, like, money teams in the finals, in my opinion. Chad agrees. All right, over to SmackDown. Um, it was about filling the Elimination Chamber that was announced. So we're going to have two Elimination Chambers on the Elimination Chamber. We'll have the Raw one, which Drew McIntyre has to be in it and defend the title. Roman doesn't have to be in it. He just has to defend the title at the Elimination Chamber. So Adam Pierce names Uso and Kevin Owens to be one and two. Scrambles to get the rest of the people in. Sonya saves the day. Let me say this in the very first qualifier match. So I'm going to ruin it. Thank God Ray and Dominic are not in this. As they take on Baron and Sammy, which aren't at this point much better. What polluted cockamamie nonsense <laughs> just to decide who fights whom. Oh, God. The only thing I took from SmackDown, to your point, in, in all this Elimination Chamber stuff, so the guys are all going to fight each other to find out who takes on Roman Reigns later in the night. So this, the deck is stacked against the challenger. What is this obsession this hard on for King Corbin. I just don't get it. Why is he consistently in the mix and a guy like AJ Styles isn't? Don't get it. <laughs> Here's my theory on that. Hey, welcome back to the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something that I, I want to comment about because, oh my God. King Corbin. Um, He's like a bald, one-eyed dick, and I I do not. He has no t no talent. I thought you were gonna say teeth for a minute. Uh, why why is he why is he there? Because he he kisses ass. He is like 
an ugly male version of fucking Sable. Oh, God. Vince McMahon had it all in for Sable in her white cotton panties. Yeah. I think that fucking Corbin is the exact, you know, the male version of Sable. That's the only thing. Why Corbin? Sami Zayn, yes. Corbin, no. I would have rather seen Sami Zayn and fucking bring up Leo Rush or something. I don't know. Little, all right, all right. Um... <laughs> Dirty Dogs won in. They were in a match against Daniel and Cesaro. Daniel and Cesaro win later on in the night. Uh, Big E fights Shinsuke. Shinsuke loses because Cruz gets in. I hate... I, I almost was excited that Seth was back, thinking this was the time that they could get rid of this piss-poor ministry, whatever they're doing... He gets in the ring, talks about how he's got he's a dad now, and I don't know why the locker room had to empty for him to be back. And then they leave because nobody gives two shits about Seth Rollins, and guess what? I don't know either. I don't know what's going on. I'm lost. I really am, Mark. I didn't get what was going on there. I almost thought that Gable and Otis were going to beat the Street Profits, which would have been blasphemy. And like I said, Cesaro and Brian are in the Elimination Chamber. SmackDown took me 15 minutes to watch. Yeah. Uh, and that was on Fox. Yeah. But you know what's great? Do you guys know what is great? Collar and elbow? Yes, it is. Collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all great merchandise. We're going to have some new shirts coming out again pretty soon because... I, I I just I'm in the know. I'll put it that way. We have a promo code, Chad. Do you know what it is? Can crushers, all one word. Capital C and can. Capital C and crushers. John, how much do we give people off for using our promo code? You will save ten percent off your total when you use that promo code. Guys, here comes Al to tell you about more. And then when we come back, it's time for. Our fantasy booking, WWWF, and what a show, or three shows, we have coming your way. World Wrestling, Worldwide Wrestling, I don't even know what the hell we're calling it, just three W's and an F. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hey! No Russian nightmare to get a call off here. And I'm looking for Chad because I understand he's got a title that I want. And we'll put it on the line and maybe Ken Crusher's podcast can broadcast. The match. Gentlemen. And welcome back, Hand Crushers listeners. It is I, the English professor, joined by Chad the Glorious Guru and your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. And in this segment, uh, we are booking our fantasy WWWF, which stands for Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Mm. Easy for me to say, not so easy for Mark to say. Nevertheless, Mark, take it away. How are we kicking off Monday Night Raw? Raw is big right off the bat. Lashley comes out and is in the ring, Chad. What's he got to say? He's got the new King of the Mountain title. First time seen on TV. First time seen since uh, he won the title. He This title has this jack dude standing above a ring. Huge belt. Reminds me a lot of the... Um, big green one? UFC, UFC title. Just with the whole look, but a cross between the UFC and probably North American title. But uh, Lashley's, you know, 
I'm fucking here, cut the music, said I've been off for two weeks. He said, I'm behind, so he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what any fighting champion would do. He said, I'm going to fight three of these pansies in the back, one right after another. Said, I'm not screwing around. Said, bring out my first victim. Unfortunately, Ray Mysterio Jr.'s music hits. He Do we hate Ray as much in our federation as we hate him right now in the WWE? No. Oh, okay. No, I don't. No. Okay. Uh, so I'm excited then. All right. Ray comes out and Lashley won't let him in the ring. And referee's pushing Lashley back and Ray's kind of just keeps trying to get around the ring and referee finally gets Lashley back enough, rings the bell, Ray is up on the buckle and he jumps off. Lashley catches him in a power bomb and just devastates him. Middle of the ring, three count. The match literally was a five second match. Wow. Ray is just, he's out in the ring. Here come the paramedics down. They break the commercial. Not even 10 minutes into the show, they're into a commercial. Come back. Lashley's like, you know, come on, bring my second person out. The Hurt Business music hits. Out comes Shelton Benjamin. And MVP's there. He's like, no, you don't want to do this. Don't want to do this. Lashley's like, we're good. We're good. They shake hands. They have, by today's standards, or yesteryear's standards, I should say, a great back-and-forth match. Uh, Sheldon Benjamin trying to avoid as much of Lashley's power moves as he can, uh, but Lashley eventually catches up with them. Shelton goes for a springboard off of the second rope, springboard elbow. Lashley catches him in the hurt lock. Submission win for Lashley. Lashley's looking unstoppable. Third match. They go right, right into the third match. Music hits, and everybody's like, who the hell is this? Out walks Shane Taylor. Lashley, Taylor gets down, gets in the ring, and <laughs> Lashley asks him, he says, are you lost? Taylor looks, at, looks him up and down, says, you have the balls to face just an indie star? Typical. Absolutely. Big man match. Just power moves, slams, suplexes. Uh, it gets to a point where they're both blown up. They get outside the ring. They won't stop fighting. Referee counts them out. They both get pissed off. Taylor grabs Mike says, this ain't the way a champion wins. He says, I want another match in three weeks. Lashley's like, you got it. So in three weeks, we have a rematch for the King of the Mountain title. Bobby Lashley against the newcomer, Shane Taylor. Newcomer, 13 years in the business. Newcomer to WWE. No, WWF. WWF. Yeah. The Worldwide Wrestling WWF, Federation, WWF, Mark. World Wrestling Federation. Yeah. Uh, after commercial, Bianca is ready to talk. Uh, so, we know that there's a fatal four-way for the Women's Championship at WrestleMania. Uh, so, we're seeing Bianca working out. So, she is, um, she's got those ropes in her hand. You know, the thing that's popular now where, like, you whip the ropes off the ground yeah. She's doing that. She's climbing ropes. Uh, she's doing squats. She's doing burpees. She's doing push-ups. So we just get a peek into what Bianca Belair is doing to prepare for this WrestleMania match. Then we go to the uh, first round matchup between Eli Drake and Damian Priest for the TV Championship. This was... Didn't really know which way this match was going to go. Damian Priest has gotten a decent amount of exposure. You know, very agile, big man. Eli Drake, not really familiar with a lot of his work. Or at least the WWF fans aren't. Uh, 
Eli tries to avoid Priest in his big moves, but he eventually gets caught. Uh, Priest just absolutely brutalizes Eli. Um, hits everything. Power bombs. Buckle bombs. Uh, just can't put him away, and he starts to get frustrated. Eli finally is able to catch Priest off guard. Ends up working on his ankle, trying to ground the big man. Sound strategy. Uh, Priest eventually mounts a comeback, uh, but he makes a mistake. He goes for a superplex off the top rope, and his leg buckles when he's just powering Eli over. Eli lands on top of him for a one, two, three. Eli Drake advances in the TV title tournament. Wow. Wow, and he just got brought in a couple weeks ago. Oh, my God, making big moves already. Over a big man, too. Over a big man. A uh, women's tag team match, John. Uh, we see a new team. Yeah, uh, so we see Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. They're not a new team. They uh, teamed up back in the days of NXT, but this is their first time teaming up in the WWF. Uh, and their opponents are known as the Sure Thing. Shore spelled S-H-O-R-E, um, as in Jersey Shore. So their opponents are the newly formed team of New Jersey Italian girls, Diana Perrazzo and Casey Cotanzaro. Wow. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Lorraine and Indy Hartwell play their usual shenanigans. They take their opponents a little lightly, which is not the right thing to do. Um, Diana Perrazzo has shown us some killer instinct. Casey Cotanzaro now has shown us a bit of a new attitude. In the end, uh, Deanna Perrazzo has Candice LeRae sort of in a below-the-waist bear hug like Jim the Anvil Nightheart would hold his opponents before Bret Hart would clothesline him. Uh, but she leans forward a little bit to kind of flatten out LeRae. Uh, Conan Zaro jumps off the top rope with a double foot stomp into LeRae's chest. They call that the boardwalk. And that... Wow. Wow. Yeah, that will lead Perrazzo and Cotanzaro to their first victory as a team over pretty stiff competition. So the sure thing wins with the boardwalk. And then we cut back and we see Sasha. Yeah, uh, Sasha, uh, after the ladies leave the ring, Sasha's music hits. She is in the ring. She says, uh, finally, she is getting more airtime than Charlotte Flair is. She deserves more air time, seeing as how she's a champion and Charlotte is not. Uh, she confesses to having talked about girls fighting for second place, and maybe that's a bit demeaning, but she's just calling it as she sees it. But at this moment, she wants to call out a real woman, a woman who took her to the limits, and that is Io Shirai. Io Shirai comes out, they shake hands, they talk about their upcoming Fatal 4-Way match at WrestleMania, um, and that they are two real women, unlike these four girls who call themselves women, and that is the horsewomen. She says that women stand and fight like Eo did. Girls jump you from behind and run away when the going gets tough. Well, that doesn't sit well with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. They come out. Baszler explains she's got a tournament match coming up later uh, for the TV championship and how they're going to bring more gold to the horsewomen. Nia says if... Uh, Sasha had the guts. She would defend her championship against her. But they say they would be happy to defend their titles against Io and Sasha uh, before they can accept Flair and Ed. Either way, jump Sasha and Io, then the tag team champions get involved, and it is a four-on-two beatdown, and they leave Sasha and Io Shirai uh, looking up at the lights. We head to a commercial, and then when we come back, um, Baszler is still lingering around. Because uh, she's taking on Shasta Steels in a TV oh, yeah, tournament so, match. That's correct, yes. So now, yeah, we, we swapped some things, listeners. All right. Uh, TV <gasps> title match, Tasha Steels versus Shayna Baszler. Um, it is what it is. Uh, Shayna Baszler... Uh, Rear naked choke, sleeper hold, whatever you want to call it. Steals, uh, steals goes to sleep. Shayna Baszler advances. Bullshit. Sorry. I, I watched some Tasha Steals matches. I like her, but Baszler goes over. 
Ripley's training now, too. We're getting a fucking training session from everybody this yeah. week. So, Rhea Ripley, unlike Bianca and what she was doing, Ripley's uh, throwing weights around. Um, she talks about her title opportunity coming up at WrestleMania, says her recent losses are behind her, and now is her chance to become champion. We head back to the ring, and Chad, uh, the Empire's hanging out? Empire's having a uh, video interview sent in because, according to as Nick Alda says to kick off the interview, there isn't anybody worth a shit to interview them, and they don't want to be around anybody really related management-wise with the WWF. That's us. So, yeah, kind of, you know, kicking on the owners there. So you have Nick Aldis, Robert Roode, James Storm, uh, Camille, and Wardlow out there, and Eli Drake out there. Uh, Aldis, pretty much, he said, short and sweet, he said, our goal, my goal, is to take the NWA title and have it replace the WWWF title. He said, if you're not familiar with or don't have an idea what I'm talking about, look up Medusa in the trash can. Damn. Damn, then we get our main event, Sasha and EO against Flair and Lacey, huh? Yeah, so when we come back from a break, um, Lita has had it. She's had it with the attacks and the disruptions. She says we settle things in the ring here in the WWF. She's going to make some matches. She tells Nia Jax, you mentioned you'd like a title shot. Fine. You'll get that Saturday. You mentioned you want to defend your tag team titles. Fine. We can arrange for that. But as of right now, Flair and Lacey Evans will take on Sasha and Io Shirai, and it happens right now. Uh, this is just balls to the wall. Sasha and Io have had it. They kicked the shit out of Flair and Lacey. Uh Sasha has Flair in the bank statement. Io is keeping Lacey out of the ring. Uh, Flair has no choice. She's about to submit when here come the tag team champions. Not heeding the warning whatsoever of Lita. They rush the ring, cause a DQ. We get more of the same. It's four on two. But wait, but wait. This is going to be like the old days. Nobody's music hits. We don't know what's going to happen. We judge from the reaction of the crowd. The pop from the crowd tells us something's happening. Kyrie Zane runs out. And now it's four on three. They're still outnumbered, but they're fighting back. But they're outnumbered. Music does not hit. The roar of the crowd tells us something else is happening. Tessa Blanchard hits the ring and helps Sasha, Io, and Kyrie Zane clear house of the four horsewomen. Uh, then they jump out of the ring, brawl outside the ring, as we fade to black. Good, good raw, good raw this week. Extended some stories. I like that. Um, still all in on the TV tournament thing. I'm all right. Good, 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 good. Uh, it's Friday night now. It's time for some SmackDown, and oh uh, boy, the Usos and Roman Reigns. Yeah, big surprise here. Usos and Roman Reigns in the ring. Ah. Uh, Running their mouths as usual, uh, saying they're tired of the shit that Empire's doing. Uh, Usos, you know, we're back, we're healthy. Why don't you guys come out here and put those tag titles on the line? Empire's music hits. Storm, Rude, and Wardlow come out. We'll accept your challenge. We don't back down from anybody. Least of all, some coconut bumpers or something, they called them. Wow. Uh, so PC's out the window in SmackDown. And Reigns, the Empire goes to walk away, and Reigns like, hold hold the fuck up a minute. And he's like, we need to ensure your trained monkey doesn't interfere in the match. Tommy Dreamer's music hits. He comes out, and he's like, you know, all this interfering from the women's matches to Raw matches, to Saturday matches. He was like, I got you on this one, Reigns. He was like, you and Wardlow, during this match, are going to be handcuffed together at ringside with a 10-foot chain. 
one on each side, one of you on each side of the announce table. Empire is pissed. And they walk away. Uh, Tessa starts coming to the ring, and we find out she's going to have the match after a break. Yeah, she's taking on Allison Kay. Uh, not necessarily anything on the line here other than two women new to this brand who are trying to make a name for themselves. Uh, we see lots of mat wrestling. We see some power moves from Allison K, like a power slam, sidewalk slam, that sort of thing. We see the head scissors from Tessa Blanchard as she grinds Allison K's face into the mat. Uh, the first time Mark and I saw Tessa Blanchard, we, other than we knew she was Tully Blanchard's daughter, we knew nothing about her. But she did this move where uh, she had her opponent in a head scissor and was like, oh, and grinding her head and, and like making that noise and looking right at the referee and saying, yeah, you like that? It's the funniest thing. So, yeah, we worked that into this. Good. Yeah. Uh, Tessa wins with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Ah, from her stepdad. Yep, yep, yep. We get an update. How's your, your boy Randy doing? So, another update on Randy Orton. He's... Uh, had the last of the surgeries they feel that he will regain his sight but it'll be quite a while down the road there was some burning of the retinas and the pupil um and there's just kind of a awkward pause with him and the interviewer and he was like i just need to go to a dark place now Ooh. and they cut away from him and we get a TV tournament match in the men's side. Sami Zayn uh, against Drew McIntyre. Uh, Drew's been on a shitty streak lately. And uh, throw the spoiler, it, it continues after a hell of a match here. Um, Zayn in his typical stalling, trying to frustrate his opponent. Uh, he eventually gets caught. Absorbs a pretty good beating. Uh and then starts to mount an offense centered on uh, Drew's neck, wearing him down a little bit. Can't put him away. Drew makes a comeback, goes for the Claymore, but absolutely demolishes the ref with it after Zane ducks. Zane hits a halluva kick, but there's no ref for the count. Zane's like, you know, screaming, conspiracy, where's the damn ref? Goes to get the ref who's laying outside the ring. In the meantime, Seth Rollins comes down and curb stomps Drew. Lays him out in the ring. Zane rolls the referee back in. Zane gets the one, two, three. Wow, had the break, and then when we come back, we have a women's TV tournament match. It is Thunder Rosa against Britt Baker. Guys, honest to God, we just pulled these out of a hat. Um, this is the easiest thing I had to do. Remember the match we saw in AEW? Same thing. That that level of work by both women. Uh, same result. Britt gets the win um, with her, her finisher that, that locked Lock. her. Um, but with um, perhaps some interference as well from uh, Rebel. Ooh. Then right after the match... We're going to follow it up, uh, training session with EO. Yeah. So, again, we're building up the four women in this match that, that are going to fight for the championship at WrestleMania. EO Shirai's training is uh, striking, hitting a heavy bag, um, hitting on some sparring partners. She knocks one out with a round kick. Some fresh meat comes in. She beats up on that sparring partner, uh, and then takes a second to say that Sasha is her friend. Uh, she says, I have much respect for her, but at WrestleMania, I will win. Charlie interview? Charlie stops. Uh, I forget her last name. I always, the brunette, the pretty brunette that does a lot of the interviews, and she's on uh, pre-shows. Oh, yeah, I can't think of her last name. I just remember Charlie. She stops Seth and Sami Zayn in the back who are trying to get away. Uh Ask him basically what the what the fuck was that all about? And Seth's like, 
he stole my spot from me. I left, and he stole my spot from me. Caruso. Caruso. Charlie Caruso. Caruso. Yeah. Uh, and then we we have another women's tag match on the show tonight. Yeah, I'm trying to build a women's tag brand. Uh, so it's going to be Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Um, guys, just going to let you know now, Mandy and Brooke are like my mulkies, I guess. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and I'm slowly turning, because I think they would be great baby faces. I'm slowly turning Raquel and Dakota Kai. Uh, so you have Mandy and Brooke using, like, underhanded tactics, choking Dakota Kai on the ropes when the ref isn't looking. The ref goes to back Mandy away. Brooke chokes her on the ropes some more until the hot tag to Raquel Gonzalez, who cleans house with her awesome power moves. Uh, in the end, it's a whip to the ropes on Dana Brooke. She comes back. Boom. Raquel hits the big boot to the face. Tags Dakota Kai. Stands in the corner. Kai climbs the ropes, climbs the shoulders, flies off of Raquel Gonzalez's shoulders, Splashes Brooke, one, two, three. It's Andre and Superfly. I don't care. That's how I'm doing it. Wow. Wow. And women heavy tonight on SmackDown. Yeah. Um, the following match that is supposed to be Mercedes Martinez against Ember Moon. Mercedes, kind of a little overzealous, is on her way to the ring as Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez are on their way out. You get a little bit of uh, Sergeant Slaughter Iron Sheet confusion as they're trying to get out of each other's way, but they keep getting in each other's way. Um, Martinez uh, shoves Gonzalez. Gonzalez, you remember these two had a TV title match. Yeah. Shook hands afterwards. Gonzalez helped her up. She's like, bitch, what's your problem? Pushes her back. Brawl ensues between these two. Uh, we get no match. No match? No match. The the brawl between Raquel Gonzalez and Mercedes Martinez took over. There was no match with Ember Moon. Which then leads to looking for some filler, and we find Sasha training. So we've seen women hitting the heavy bag, doing push-ups, doing rope exercises, throwing weights around. So now we go to the champion's training session. Uh, she's in a chair, and there's one, uh, one person working on her right hand doing her nails, there's one person working on her left hand doing her nails. Uh, there's a person kneeling at her feet, giving her a pedicure. There's someone doing her hair, and there's someone doing her makeup. Um, and all Sasha has to say is that at WrestleMania, she will bankrupt all three opponents' chances by eliminating everyone herself, and you can take that to the bank. We finally get the main event. The Tag Team Championship is on the line. The Empire versus the Usos. Empire comes out first. They go down to the ring. Wardlow's not happy about being handcuffed. Dreamer tells him, get the handcuff or you're suspended. They finally get the handcuff on him. Here comes Reigns and the Uslos. <sighs> Reigns comes over, just glares at Wardlow, standing right in his face. Grabs the other handcuff, puts it right on. They're at the end of the announce table, opposite each other. Uh, this match was an old school, bloody brawl between probably four of the best athletes, um, four of the top 20 athletes in the last 10, 15 years. Um, James Storm hits an insane super, super kick that uh, bloodies Jey Uso to the point of where, obviously, Jay tags out. Uh, Jimmy's taken an extended beating. Kind of looked a little bit out of place, but you see Jay in the background being worked on by the paramedics. Um, faces just busted everywhere. Uh, Jimmy finally hits. Uh, hits the hot tag. The Usos hit a, a superplex splash combo for a two count. Um, when Storm kicks out of that, Wardlow stands up and Rain stands up. They kind of walk, they're walking towards each other. They start jaw jacking. Um, all of a sudden, Empire's music hits. 
here comes Nick Aldis and Camille. Aldis comes down. He's just looking at Reigns and thumping him on the chest and everything. Uh, Reigns just gets pissed and throws a punch, so they start brawling. Camille unlocks, you know, shows Kevin Owen, or not Kevin Owen, shows Paul Heyman how you unlock a handcuff. Nice. Um, and Wardlow kind of goes around the side of the ring. Usos are kind of distracted with everything going on. Some officials come down. Um, Wardlow's able to get in the ring and absolutely spears Jay. Uh, just one of the most devastating spears I've ever seen. Um, Jimmy tries to jump back in the ring to help out, but he gets thrown out. Then Storm and Rude hit a kill switch super kick combo um, on Jay for the win. Uh, Reigns jumps in, starts trying to help him out, but he gets beat down by Empire. Uh, show ends. Aldis is standing over Reigns. He's holding both titles. He hands the NWA belt to Camille and proceeds to rip the WWF title to shreds, throws it on Reigns. Damn. Damn. So that's SmackDown. That's SmackDown. Saturday, uh, I know we have two TV tournament matches, but we start with another women's match right off the bat. Havoc versus Liv Morgan. Um, again, you know, uh, when Razor Ramon first started, he was beating some nobodies, and then they gave him Virgil, and then they gave him Tito Santana. And this is sort of the same idea. Um, again, Havoc makes short work of Liv Morgan. She is ready for some more competition. Uh, we get a recap of the bracket thus far, since there's only two matches left for... Do you want to go over what are... Yeah, we'll go over who's left here after this show. Okay. Uh, then we get the men's match. One of the most ones I've been uh, anticipating, Moose against Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens comes down with a mic uh, as he's walking down. He's like, cut the music, get this guy out here. I don't know who the hell he is. I want to get this done and over with. I don't get paid for by the hour. Um, Moose comes out, Owens is in his face talking shit, just, you know, typical Kevin Owens, the ref finally gets him parted enough, throws the signal for the bell to ring, Owens charges Moose, and is just absolutely destroyed with a clothesline. Uh, Moose picks up a almost motionless Owens, uh, body, Buckle bombs him in all four corners. After the last buckle bomb, he hit him with a spear. One, two, three. Owens gets n no offensive moves Damn. in this match. He's not moving on the ground. The referee's checking on him. The X is thrown up. And they come. you see the paramedics coming down to the ring uh, with a bodyboard and... That's when they break to a commercial. We come back. It kind of tells us Owens has been taken to the local medical center, uh, wherever the hell we are. And we get another TV tournament match for the women. This is going to be Tony Storm versus Tessa Blanchard. The commentators note it's a similar style match that Tessa just had Friday against a bigger, stronger opponent. Um, will the same game plan work? Tony Storm does bump her around a little bit. Um, she whips Tessa into the ropes, goes for a back body drop. Tessa catches her in a suplex position, snaps her off the top rope into the suplex for a two count. Storm kicks out. Um, Tessa's waiting for her. When Storm gets to her feet, bear hug, boom, into a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Uh, so it took both suplexes to win this match, but Tessa does advance in the tournament. Uh, and then... Kind of uh, always a short show on Saturday, but we get a WWF women's title match between Sasha and Nia. This is what Lita promised. She said Nia wanted a match. She's got it. 
Um, so she's booking some, some different things to kind of settle these scores once and for all. Um, this tells an interesting story. You would think Naya being, again, the bigger, stronger of the two athletes would want to close the gap and Sasha would try to keep her distance. Not the case here. Sasha goes right in for the kill, uh, goes after Naya's legs, both legs, chops them down. Uh, and so it's Naya trying to create space here. Doesn't have a lot of success. Um, she's trying to keep Sasha at bay, uh, pulls off a few moves, but Sasha's just tenacious, keeps going after the legs. Once she's got her down, she struts, woos, and slaps on the figure four. Um, Naya does manage to use her arms to pull herself to the ropes to break the figure four. Ultimately, Sasha gets the bank statement on her. Naya's trying to push herself up, but keep in mind, she's had her legs worked on for the entirety of this match. Doesn't have enough uh, strength left in those legs to power out of this. Taps out to uh, Sasha Banks in the bank statement with Sasha talking shit in her ear, just like she used to do in the old days. But as we're watching Sasha talk shit, this vignette pops up on the Jumbotron. Yeah, we're kind of wondering what the hell is going on because there's, it's like it's being shot at a, a movie theater, but there's four wrestlers, two on each side of the aisle, I guess you could put it. You can't see who they are. They're kind of blacked out and... You hear them talking, and they're they're watching tag team matches of current superstars, the Usos and Rude and Ziggler from before, and they're just talking amongst themselves, and you can't really hear what they're saying. And then all of a sudden, one pipes up. We've been we've been watching, we've been scouting, looking at everybody from the shadows. But when the time's right, we'll reveal ourselves in an honorable way. And the vignette ends. Wow. Wow. Uh, final announcement as it is put up on our website then. Monday, we will have two women's TV title matches. The second round of the tournament starts. It will be Britt Baker taking on Bailey and Lacey Evans taking on Tessa Blanchard. Friday night, it will be Sonya Deville taking on Raquel Gonzalez and Shayna Baszler taking on Ray Lynn. Holy shit, you're going to have to tell me all this again off air. I of course completely I completely missed it, yeah. Uh, I have to tell Chad every week. So Monday, uh, it'll be Karrion Cross taking on Kyle O'Reilly. And the newly engaged Keith Lee taking on Sami Zayn on Raw. SmackDown, we get Ricky Starks against Moose. And Adam Cole, baby, taking on Eli Drake. So, Did you um, did you like the twist there? You saw one woman training, the second woman training, the third woman training. What's Sasha going to do? Train! She's getting, she's getting her hair and her nails done. I love that. I actually did love that. Now, Saturday was a great show. I love Saturday's show. Uh, you guys have me. Monday was a little... It was good. It forwarded some storylines. Friday and Saturday, though, was the meat and potatoes of the yeah. week for the WWWWWWF. Yep. I loved it. Uh, when we come back, um, some news about what's going to come up. Coming up for Can Crushers, we have our first spoiler, uh, as we have a spotlight this week that is amazing. We will have Love Them While We Got Them, and I don't know what these two are going to bring to the board, but that's what I'm bringing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the East End villain, Josh Ashcraft, and you are listening to the Can Crushers podcast. And welcome back, Can Crusher Nation. It is I, the glorious guru, in studio with Mark the Mark, and... Returning to us peasants, the English professor, John. From where? Charlotte, North Carolina? From the great state of New England. Via Charlotte, North Carolina. Great state of New England. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's do the NXT TakeOver first. We have a big announcement, and we have love them while we have them. So, thank you. 
The finals in the women's is Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez against Ember Moon and Shotzi. I will be pissed, and I'm going to go first, if Dakota and Raquel do not win this. Agreed. I am going with them. I love that team. Yeah. I bet you we lose, though. Uh, if I, I hope not. If we have to put money on it. Uh, the men's final, MSK and the Grizzled Young Veterans. I picked them to win it when it was announced, so I can't change. I agree. Um, I think this is a story where they make it two years in a row, and the second time is a charm. That was easy. It's three of us. Oh, we're just ripping through this. Uh, Gargano against Kushida. I think it's going to be a great match. I really do. Um, I think Gargano wins via hook and crook, and this is only the start of this. Because I am one that thinks Kushida is going to take the title off of Gargano, but not tonight. I think we get a new champion. I was along your lines of thinking a little while ago until NXT this week. But I think after they, you know, the kick to the head that knocked out Kushida from Gargano, I think he, I think Kushida gets his revenge tonight and wins the championship. Max disagrees with you. I got to agree with John. I think uh, Gargano is going to do something to uh, fuck up and Kushida is going to take the title. Three-way match for the women. Io, who is a champion defending against Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez. I, I like Io. I do. I'm ready for it to be off of her, but I don't think this is the match that you take it off of her. Uh, against either one of them, I'm fine. I would like a better one-on-one -on -one match with Io and somebody. I don't think it happens. So I'm going to say EO wins. Agreed. Yeah, I don't see either one of these women beating her or one another to take the championship. EO leaves tonight as champion. EO leaves tonight as champion, but I think the problem with it's going to be the other two are going to, they're going to screw each other. I, yeah, essentially. And Phil, Finn against Pete Dunne, I think this is going to be a hell of a match. I think it could be already classified as one of the match of the years. It's going to be hard hitting. It's going to be crazy. We're going to talk about it a lot next week. And we're going to talk about Finn keeping the title. I agree. Finn keeps the title. And I think you meant matches of the year, not match of the years. Because this can only be the match of 2021. It can't be the match of... Right, that's 2022, because it's taking place now. But yeah, what, if, what if you only watch it in 2022 and you don't uh, listen to our awards? What if it's that damn good? Right. And it just wins. Fuck it. We won the award for two years, bitches. Jackson, it has the potential to be that. Jackson Argos won Rookie of the Year back-to-back -back years, so why couldn't this win Match of the Years? Fucking Jock Sampson won a title other than something that he bought at fucking Kmart, so anything can happen. Well, we transition to IWC. Let me just get this out there. This coming Saturday, IWC Wrestling Network dot com or John always corrects me. Um, they're back. It's called Kickoff. They're gonna have a great show. A couple title defenses on the line. I'm sure we'll spotlight it and cover some of it here in the near future. IWC Network, $9.99 a month, or if you just want to buy the pay-per-view for that night, I believe it's like 15 bucks. Guys, it's wrestling on Saturday night, and it's it's going to be worth it. IWCWrestling.com. There you go. It's the website, yeah. And breaking news on this, I found out a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the little meme or whatever that Jock Sampson put out about 740. I know what 740 is. He is challenging Joey Chestnut to a hot dog eating contest, and Jock says that he can eat 740 hot dogs. Oh, that's unbelievable. That's like 10 times the record. The record's like 74, I think. Right. Wow. So 10 to 1 on the hot dogs. Holy cow. That's unbelievable. And Jonathan. if any fat bastard can do it, it's Jock Samson. <laughs> John! 
<laughs> What's your segment, Carl? This, ladies and gentlemen, is called Love Them While We Have Them. It is a segment where we appreciate the efforts of a wrestler while they are still here with us. Hopefully, that particular wrestler is listening um, and hears just how much we appreciate his or her efforts to entertain us. So, it's my pick your pick week. this week and i i had this one in the hopper for a while and i, I was wondering if i was going to throw it out not to bury anybody or what have you but brutus the barber beef a cake who wants to go first i John can <laughs> i okay we met the barber really good dude um, teamed up with Hulk Hogan back in his early days in Florida. Charismatic, great look, huge muscles, still, still just jacked up arms and chest. Um, and you know, not the best, not the best in the ring, but willing to listen, willing to learn. Um, Believable with Greg the Hammer Valentine, with with the Hammer carrying the bulk of that work. Um, had believable runs, you know, against the Honky Tonk Man. Was consistently pushed for the Intercontinental Title. Never won it. Never beat Mister Perfect for it either. But was always in that title hunt. Um, I mean, in the ring, he was again fun, charismatic. And what little interaction we had with him, really, really nice guy. Uh, two things come to mind right off the bat with him is John just hit it. He he could work a crowd, um, regardless of what role he was in, whether he was a good guy going against the honky tonk man or whether he was with uh, Valentine. Um, he could he could work a crowd. Uh, his in-ring work, again, eh, but that just wasn't his strength. The other thing is he, no matter what he was given, and I say this from in life from the, the parasailing accident where his face was basically destroyed um, to the god-awful characters he was given in WCW. Um, he, I don't want to say he made them work, but he he took the shit that he was given, you know? He, he was given a lot of lemons, and he made some lemonade out of some pretty shitty characters and angles. My, You guys nailed it on the head. Uh, my thoughts when I came up with Bruce the Barber uh, a week or two ago was great supporting role as a tag team partner you know you can't say hammer wasn't the strength or hammer wasn't the technique but brutus came in and gave him a break did some shenanery or some you know this or some that and then hammer would actually end up getting the wind i mean let's go back and watch a lot of those brutus matches hammer gets a lot of the wins even you know but, you know, they, they did what they needed to do to make them believable. Uh, when he got the barber, you know, gimmick, did he have to wrestle? Or did he just have to punch and kick and put you to sleep and make a haircut? His gimmick was the haircut. That was, he did what he needed to do. Chad referenced WCW. Um, yeah, what happened there happened there. And... He didn't have to fall through a wall, at least. So he did what he needed to but do. But he did, he did need to keep Marty Jannetty from running off of the barber shop. He did. He Jannetty tried to, you know, jump through the window and didn't quite make it, and Brutus had to help him. And even with the barber shot, thank you. He uh, he made that work. You know what? Best speaker? No, but he did what he needed to do to get the point across and all that. Everybody remembers that breakup. What else happened on the barber shop? Boy, that's got that's easily the biggest one. Um, I really don't know. I don't know another barber shop that stood out. 
Right. And he's going to be remembered for Hogan and Andre. What? No. That, no, that was uh that was a Piper's pit. That was a pit. The original one, but wasn't there something on the barbershop with them uh, later yeah. when Andre and Haku were champions or you something need more like that this week? That was Brother Love. That was uh, Brother Love. Okay. So he does not need any more homework this week. No. Um yeah, so John, how do you end this? Uh, Bruce Beefcake, as John said, nice guy, nice guy. We met him in New York, and we got to hang out with him a little bit. Not as much as Wayne the Train Bloom, but we'll talk about that again someday soon again. <laughs> Brutus the Barber Beefcake, cheers to being here. Cheers to being here. Uh, is it time for what's going to happen on Wednesday? Oh, I thought you were going to say it's a Vader time. No, it's boss time. It's not boss time. That would be amazing. No. no, we've had enough of the boss this week. I don't know. I don't think I can ever have enough of the boss. First, well, that was a teaser. John, do you have anything for the week? Um, no, I don't. No, doing doing chores around the house. That's all. <laughs> good, good. Camp Crushers is yeah. filled, so we uh we're all right. We could probably take a week off as well, but we're not gonna because this. Wednesday Spotlight. I'm going to go to camp in October, by the way. Does anybody want to go to camp with me? It's like a man camp. I, I have to take a U.S. title because I've been challenged to a match. Yeah, you did hear that on one of our teasers this week. So yeah. did people put two and two together? Did they put two and two together that this Wednesday Spotlight is with the Russian nightmare Nikita Koloff? Guys, we usually don't reveal them. We make you guys think, or you have to really listen to the promos that we throw in between our segments and everything. John, you didn't get involved. You had something going on, so Chad came down and took your spot for this one. And, Chad. Uh, what a what a conversation. Uh, I mean, there's so much that comes out that he talks about uh, from his personal life, which he dove into, um, to the camp, to, you know, uh, things within wrestling and stuff like that. I listened to a lot of shoot interviews and stuff. I got more out of our interview with him, which was about an hour, than I got out of a two-hour, 15, 20-minute one that he did with uh, another person person another podcast yeah and I, the little commie challenged me to a u.s title match and he kind of threw a dig slash challenge out to a gentleman that we just talked to today which we got a rebuttal yeah we did get a rebuttal but that'll be in a couple weeks that'll be in a couple weeks uh, you guys are booking Legends matches on these spotlights. We are. We are. It legit is a Legends match. And they've met in the ring before. Um, I took a lot out of this interview with Nikita. I, I love the wrestling part of it. But, you know, we when we contacted him, we told him, hey, we'll give you time. Talk about the man camp and everything. When we talked about the man camp in the last few minutes of the show, it, it just, you guys know how religious I am, and I don't, we don't push it on the show or anything, so, but the last uh, 10, 15 minutes of this podcast was about that, and uh, jokingly, Nikita knocks me being a Catholic, which is really cool, but I got uplifted after hearing Nikita talk about his man camp and everything. Um, there's one coming up. Listen on Wednesday because Nikita gives you all the details. It's in April. And then another one is being scheduled for October. And who is his main cohort oh, Lex, in these man camps? Lex Luger. Yes. Is also at man camp with them. So he, they're, they're over their TIFF from 1987? Yep. That's what they, they he, he actually touches on that uh, on, yeah. the, on the spotlight. Oh, okay. So, yeah, what a hell of a spotlight. We usually don't break them down this much, and we just say make sure you listen. But, uh, yeah, got a lot of love from this past week's spotlight. Jamie Jameson's. Guys, if you haven't listened to that, it is blowing up 
the country hammer from IWC is getting love from all over. Except Justin Plummer seems <laughs> Plummer seems a bit jealous. He he was kind of a you know whiny little sorts about Jamie talking to you. Well, you know, Plummer. Well, I mean, so he was happy we had him. <laughs> well, not that he talked to you, but that you know, Jamie's you know said more than you know. Thanks for the paycheck and ignored Justin. Justin was pissed. Guys, great show. Uh, we're coming off of two highs from wrestling interviews that we did. One, Nikita. Two, you'll find out in a couple weeks. Um, unbelievable week for Camp Crushers across the board and more to come down the line. So, John. Yeah, and we booked some fun stuff too, right? Oh, yeah, of course. You booked some fun stuff. I loved it. I yeah. said it was a good week. Yeah. Right. Raw was a little... Raw was a little lackluster, guys. I'm going to say that, but SmackDown and Saturday brought it. Okay, fair enough. Got to say uh, a single shout-out to our newly engaged couple in wrestling. You briefly mentioned it. Oh, go ahead, then. Keith Lee and... Reckoning? Reckoning. Um, Mia Yim? I, Mia Yim. That's the one I was trying to remember. Uh, announced their engagement this week. Um Date not set yet. Hope to get an invite. Congrat congratulations. Um, Keith, if you're listening to us, I can book you through on the TV title tournament <laughs> to win the belt if we can get an invite. Uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, new one picked us up this week. And I, well, it might have been a couple weeks ago, but everything's also available on Pandora as well along with millions of other podcasting hosts across the board, and more news to come on something else in the works for Can Crushers. Um, all social media is at CanCrusher69. Send us some stuff. Guys, uh, I've been asked recently, too, um, are we going to do can Ask Can Crushers, even though we're doing this tournament for a couple more weeks? We can throw them in. We can always, we don't necessarily have to do a full show, but we can always throw some in. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, if you get a, a, a something that you really need to get to us, you know, we can answer throw all the questions out there. Right. Uh, what else? Oh, and you can send them to cancrusher69 at gmail.com. That's, that's, that's it. That's everything I got. You guys going to ruin it together, or do you want me to start it? Uh, leave the ruining up to us this week. Go ahead. All right. Remember, Chad, just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. You guys have practiced. <laughs>